Hello, everybody. This is uh, Giacomo Bellani from the University of Milan Bicocca, and I am one of the founders of this uh, uh, new of this uh, YouTube channel uh, called Uvent Mechanical Ventilation in about two minutes. So, faithful to our claim, we would like to introduce. Uh, show a new series of uh, very short videos which aim to present in less than five minutes, okay, uh, some uh, new concepts or some old concepts that deserve some uh, um, uh, reappraisal or maybe overview of papers or very interesting cases or uh, uh, maybe clinical vignettes. So if you have anything you would like to present here, please feel free to uh, propose it to us. Uh, no worries, I'm not meaning to become a YouTuber. So let's start with a great classic, uh, which is the driving pressure. So this is the title I gave to myself as I had this privilege, uh, which is uh, driving pressure. What is it and why is it important? And I recommend all of you to read this paper from 2005 of intensive care medicine, where Gattinoni and Pesenti reappraised the concept of the baby lung uh, about 20 years after they had published their seminal paper. Now, this looks quite obvious to us that, that ARDS lungs are very heterogeneous, but when this result was published, it was really new information that, that did not exist before. And what was even more interesting was the finding that the size of the lung available to ventilation was tightly related to the compliance of lung itself, or uh, if we had to say it better, the compliance of the lung was tightly related to the size of the lung. So the RDS lung is not just stiffer, but it is stiff because it is small. And the smaller it is, the stiffer it is. So in a way, compliance becomes now a proxy of the size of the lung. And why is this relevant to driving pressure? Because Driving pressure, having said this, has a very strong rationale. Let's play around with, with numbers. We are used to um, normalize tidal volume to patient's ideal body weight, okay? But we don't ventilate the entire patient from, from the, the top of the air to the tip of the toes. We just ventilate the lungs, and we know that the size of the lungs can be very different depending on the uh, severity of the patients. And so ideally, we would like not to size, to scale the tidal volume to the patient size, but to the end expiratory lung volume. So to the size of the lung, which is available for ventilation, which yes, we can measure, but we can also approximate from compliance. And if you, instead of end expiratory lung volume, you write here compliance and you, play around a little bit with maths, you can do it or you can trust me, uh, you will see that you end up with driving pressure, which is just the difference between plateau pressure and deep. This is the reason, the first reason why uh, driving pressure is so relevant, because it has a very strong physiologic rationale. It's very simple to measure. You just have to measure PEEP, total PEEP, including intrinsic PEEP if possible at all, we just have to measure the plateau pressure, whether it is pressure control ventilation, volume control ventilation, it doesn't really make any difference. The real point is we take the plateau pressure and subtract to it the PEEP. And so in this paper, uh, Marcelo Amato uh, made the world reapprise the concept of, of driving pressure, showing that Yes, plateau is a very relevant parameter, but what really impacts the outcome of the patient is the driving pressure itself. So basically, these are patients grouped according to different levels of driving pressure. We have some patients here with, I mean, all the patients have the same 
plateau pressure, they get to the same plateau pressure, but they get to the same plateau pressure in very different ways. These guys here start from a very low peak and have a high driving pressure. These guys here start from a high peak and have a very low driving pressure. And indeed, the first group has a much higher mortality than the last group. So in other words, it, it's not just a matter of what is the level of plateau that you get to, it's more a matter of how you get from to this plateau pressure. And uh, as you see here, these patients are grouped according, which all have the same levels of driving pressure, but increasing level of plateau have more or less the same mortality rate. And uh, we also um, had the same observation in our lung safe study, where we have shown that a, a cutoff of driving pressure around 14 centimeters of water was really predictive of the outcome of the patient. So that patients with a driving pressure higher than 14 centimeters of water uh, were much more uh, at risk of death. So, of course, there's much more to say on driving pressure, but our claim is um, mechanical ventilation in about two minutes, and this is already more than six, so I should be going now. Uh, just to let you know that down here in the comments, you'll find some papers uh, that you can read on the topic. And, and just keep in mind, driving pressure has a very strong physiologic rationale. It expresses the ratio of tidal volume to the size of the available lung. So it's a good estimate of the impact of mechanical ventilation on the lungs. It's very easy to measure and interpret during uh, controlled ventilation, and we will see in another video how to measure this during assisted ventilation. And uh, just in your clinical practice, I know one size does not fit all, but if I have to give you a take-home message, is try to keep this value below 14 centimeters of water. So if you listen till the end, thank you so much. Uh, please feel free to uh, send me any question or comment uh, down here. Bye-bye.